Good morning, students. Today we are starting up with the remaining topics in the chapter of our environment. Yesterday we had discussed what do you mean by environment, the surrounding of us, this the environment that is again we come across the types of environment, the natural environment and the artificial environment. The natural environment, like the forest, we have discussed about the oceans which are naturally occurring. Artificial environment, we have discussed about the garden, the parks, here, the aquarium, those are the artificial. So yesterday we had discussed about the definition for the environment. We are coming close the natural environment and the artificial environment. Natural environment we have discussed about the forest, the oceans. Here in the artificial world we have discussed about the gardens, the crop field, which are man-made uh, environment. Further, uh, we had come across the ecosystem. What is ecosystem? The interaction between the biotic and probiotic components is called to be as the ecosystem. Interaction between biotic and probiotic components. This ecosystem. Ecosystem, it is the structural and functional unit of the biosphere. Structural and functional unit of biosphere. Yes, so uh, the structural and uh, functional unit of biosphere is the ecosystem. In ecosystem, as we have mentioned, we have defined the ecosystem as interaction between the biotic and neurobiotic components. Biotic components, what can be considered here as the name suggests, biotic means it is related with the living things, which includes the microorganisms, the Animals, plants. Okay, so everything that is consisting of the line, those are under the category of biotic and abiotic, which are non-living, which are not, which are consisting of no life in way. So those are the non-living. Very we can consider the temperature. We can consider the soil pressure, air. And water. So those, uh, those are the probiotic components. Those are not consisting of the life into it. Yesterday we had come across one more point related with the biotic component where we had discussed about the biotic component. Right? We have discussed something related with the biotic community. So, into the biotic community, we had discussed about the producers, the consumers, and the decomposers. If you remember this, into the biotic community, we had discussed about the producers. The producers which are able to prepare their own food by utilizing the sunlight by the process of photosynthesis. We had come across the next consumers. The consumers, those include the primary consumers, the secondary consumers and the tertiary consumers, which are dependent on the producers for the nutrition, right? So here we are coming across the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary consumers. 
right? But here into the consumers, we can uh, mention over here either they are directly dependent on to the producers or they are indirectly dependent on to the producers for their nutrition. Like if we uh, speak up about the primary consumers, the goat, they are dependent on to the plants for their nutrition. And lion, it is taking the flesh of the goat as that is the herbivores, so it is indirectly dependent on to the plants for their nutrition. And lastly, we have come across the decomposers. These decomposers, they are converting the in organic matter, they are converting the organic matter to as inorganic matter with the help of the microorganisms like the bacteria, the fungi. Okay, so those are the decomposers which feed onto the dead end decay matter. So this is what we had learned yesterday. Today we shall start up with the next topic that is interaction between interaction between the biotic components. What we are going to come across is this topic by interaction between the biotic components. What, what we are going to learn here. We are saying biotic company, interaction between the biotic components itself, interaction between the living things itself, how the interaction is taking place. Here, we can discuss here about the food chain. Well, what do you mean by food chain? Food chain, it is the series of being in an, eaten up by one another. Series of organisms. It's series of organisms being eaten up by one another. So this is a definition for the food chain. Series of the organisms being eaten up by one another. This is called to be as the food chain. If we take the example of the grass, which is a producer, is being eaten up by the grasshopper. Which is the primary consumer. And if this grasshopper is eaten up by the frog, this becomes the secondary consumer as it is feeding onto the grasshopper. Next comes the snake, the tertiary consumer, which is eating up the secondary consumer, and lastly the eagle, which becomes a paternal consumer. So this is a food chain wherein an organism is being eaten up by one another. So this is called as a food chain. Here in this food chain, if we see the grass, it is the producer. The rest all are the consumers. Right? The rest all are the consumers. Wherein their level differs. Right? As this becomes the primary consumer, this becomes the primary consumer. The grasshopper becomes the primary consumer. Frog becomes the secondary consumer. Snake is the tertiary consumer and even comes to the as quaternary consumer. So if we see a food chain, it is having a linear, it is a, in a single straight line. Okay, the food chain is always in a straight line. Where the grass is being eaten up by the grasshopper, grasshopper is eaten up by the frog, frog is eaten up by the snake, and snake is eaten up by the eagle. So in this way, the biotic components. Wherein the living organisms itself, they are interacting with each other for their needs. The other one we come across is the food web. The next we come across is the food web. Food web, it is the web-like pattern, web -like pattern of the food chain.
right? The web-like pattern of the food chain is called to be as the food web. It is here wherein the grass is not only eaten by the grasshopper, grass can also be eaten up by the goat. Goat can also be eaten up by the lion, right? Grass is also eaten up by the rabbit, which becomes the primary consumer, the herbivores, and rabbit is also eaten up by the lion. Further, if we take the other example, grass is eaten by the uh, insect. So, yeah, grass is eaten by the insect, and insect is eaten by the lizard. So, when it is forming a bed like pattern, it is not necessary that grass should be eaten up by the grass over only. Grass can form the organisms where they become the primary consumers and differs into the next level of the food chain. And it is forming a bed like pattern and hence it is called to be as the food web. Now, a question arises what happens if a particular organisms are removed from this food web or food chain. Suppose the grass is eaten by the goat and goat is eaten up by the lion. If all the goats of this food chain are removed, what happens? The number of lions are more, wherein they won't get the food. As the goats are not available, they are removed from the food chain. What happens? The and uh, the gas content will be increased and the number of the lions are also increased as these lions, they need to depend on the goat for their nutrition. If these are removed, they start to have the starvation among themselves. They start to have the nutrition from other domestic animals or they, they may even attack onto the humans for their nutrition. So this is one of the, uh, one of the part of the food bed or the food chain where if one level is removed, the disturbance in the ecosystem is seen. The other one, if all the lions are removed from a food chain, what happens? If all the lions are removed, the number of the herbivores increases, but there won't be any organism where in they can feed onto these herbivores if the lions are removed. And the uh, amount of the grass in that area will be Vanish because the uh, the goats starts to graze onto the grass and the area becomes desert like. The example we have seen is into the Rajasthan, where in Rajasthan, where in the food chain that was uh, that is consisting of the grass, the geese, and the lions. If here in this area the geese are removed. Uh, what, uh, sorry, these uh, lions are removed. What happens here? There, uh, there is an imbalance, disturbance into the food chain. Why? Because the leaves start to graze onto the grass and the area becomes completely desert like. And this was seen in the Rajasthan. Okay, so the next part we come across is the interaction. This is interaction between the biotic components. Next we come across the interaction between the abiotic components and the biotic components. The next topic that we come across is the interaction between the abiotic components and biotic components. Right. Interaction between the biotic components and the uh, uh, biotic components and the biotic components. In your textbook, they have given the example of the pond ecosystem. Right. The pond ecosystem, what it is consisting of? The pond ecosystem is consisting of water. Consisting of the soil. It is consisting of the plants. Protein plants you can write. Um, the submerged plants.
This is also consisting of the gases. It is also consisting of the algae, bacteria. It is also consisting of the phytoplankton, very small plants. Okay, which are called it as a phytoplankton. It is also consisting of the small fishes, big fishes, and even the frogs. So all these are present into the pond ecosystem. If you see the pond, pond ecosystem, we come across the water, soil, the plants which are floating into the water, the submerged plants, the gases, dissolved gases are present. Algae, bacteria, phytoplankton, the very small plants present into the pond. Those are called to be as the phytoplankton. Small fishes, big fishes, and the frog. All these are present into the pond ecosystem. Among these, water, soil, gases, these are the probiotic components. Right? These are the probiotic components. The rest, the floating plants, the submerged plants, algae, bacteria, phytoplankton, all these are the broad, uh, small fishes and the big fishes, all these are biotic components. Okay. Now, here the interaction between the herbiotic components and the biotic components, how is it taking place? Here, the floating plants, they are preparing their own food. How? They are utilizing the carbon dioxide from the surrounding. As they are floating, they will be taking up the surrounding carbon dioxide. They take up the water, um, hydrogen, that is uh, the water, which is uh, consisting of hydrogen content into it, the water required for the photo photosynthesis process. They take up the sunlight and prepare the food. So these become the floating plants, become the producers over here. These floating plants and the phytoplankton, these prepare their own food and these become the consumers for the small fishes. Okay, and small fishes, they are eaten up by the big fishes and the big fishes, they are eaten up by the frog. So in this way, they are interacting among themselves to form a good ecosystem that is a pond ecosystem. If we speak about the submerged plants, how do they prepare their food? As the sunlight will not be reaching up to the depth of the pond, up to the depth, here they will be utilizing as some uh, dead and decay matter is present into the water, which will be eaten up by the bacteria and the algae. Bacteria and the microorganisms which are present, they will be feeding onto that decay matter and they will be giving up the nutrients and that will be taken up by these submerged plants which become the food for the small fishes, big fishes and for the frogs as well. This is how the interaction between the biotic and herbiotic components will be taking place into the animal. That is the pond ecosystem. The next topic that we come across is the energy flow. Before moving on to the energy flow, let us see what they can mean by trophic level. The next topic that is trophic level. So each level of the food chain, each level of food chain is called to be as the trophic level. Okay, each level of the Food chain is called to be as trophic. If we see here, the first it comes for the producers. These are consumed by the consumers, wherein we can write the primary consumers. Next comes the secondary consumer. And lastly, the tertiary consumer. Okay, so 
the producers, these are considered to be as the first trophic level. Okay, these are considered to be, uh, the producers are considered to be as the first trophic level. The primary consumers, those are the second trophic level. Secondary consumers, they become the third trophic level. And tertiary consumers, they become the fourth trophic level. Okay, so at a, uh, at a stage, a food chain or, um, will be consisting of either the fourth or the fifth trophic level. Most of the times it is the fourth trophic level itself. Why? Because as the food chain increases, the energy goes on decreases. That we shall see into the next topic that is energy flow. Now, here into the energy flow. How is it moving from first trophic level to the fourth or fifth trophic level? Let us see here. We know that the producers, they are preparing their own food. So, the producers here are the plants. These plants, how do they prepare their own food? They take the help of the solar energy. Right? They take the help of the solar energy from the sun and this energy is trapped up into the chlorophyll and they are preparing their own food in the form of starch that is C6, H12, O6, they are preparing and this is the starch. This starch, it is the stored form of the energy and this energy has to be utilized by the plant for its cellular activities and for that the plant requires the energy. From where does this energy come from? Here, it undergoes the process of oxidation that is respiration, undergoes the process of respiration that is oxidation of the glucose is taking place and it is releasing the energy, right? It is releasing the energy in the form of ATP molecules. And these ATP molecules are utilized by the plant for carrying out other cellular activities. When all the cellular activities are being carried up, at that time, most of the energy is lost in the form of heat. Right. So here, what happens? As the producers, the plants, they are taking up the solar energy from the sun and undergoing the process of photosynthesis to prepare the food in the form of starch, which is stored up into the leaves. And this stored form of the energy has to be utilized by the plant. And this is possible when the energy is released. And this energy is released when the process of respiration is carried out into the plant, which releases the energy and this energy is released in the form of ATP molecules. These ATP molecules, they are utilized by the plant cells for various cellular activities, wherein they, most of the energy is lost in the form of heat. So, say around, then little amount of the energy is present into the plant. Okay, say 10% of the energy is present into the plant. Now, this 10% of the energy is eaten up by the consumer. If we take the consumers into this, if we take up the primary consumer, okay, the primary consumer, say the herbivores, which are the herbivores, okay. So, whatever the 10% of the energy is present into the plant is consumed by the first primary consumers, that is the herbivores. What happens here? That 10% of the energy is not completely utilized by the primary consumer. Here, this energy is utilized for the cellular activities again and wherein they are using most of the energy in the form of heat and only again the 10% of the energy is present into the herbivores. Now, this 10% of the energy again further is consumed by the secondary consumers. See, if we take here the example of the insect, the primary consumer, if we take up here as any insect, this insect is being eaten up by the frog. 
So here the firm becomes the secondary consumer. Okay. So again here the cellular activities has to be performed. It also the secondary consumer also requires energy, and that energy is taken up from this ten percent. And here when it is undergoing the cellular activities, most of the energy is again lost in the form of heat. Only again ten percent of the energy is present into the firm, and this ten percent of the energy is further taken up by the tertiary consumers. Say, if we take the example of the snake over here, what happens? This snake again cellular activities, energy is required here also. Most of the energy is lost in the form of heat. Only ten percent of the energy is remained again into the plant. So the same, and this ten percent of the energy again is utilized by the next quaternary. Consumer, say the eagle. Say the eagle. Again, most of the energy is lost in the form of heat. So, into the entire food chain, we have seen that here only the ten percent of the energy is passed from one trophic level to the next trophic level. This we call it to be as the law of ten percent, ten percent law of energy. Okay, it is called to be as ten percent law of energy. Got it? Here. After this, we come across the next term, which is called to be as the biological magnification. Which is called to be as biological magnification. What is this biological magnification? We have seen that DDT it is a non-degradable substance, right? Wherein it cannot be degraded by the microorganisms. It persists for a longer time. This DDT, when it is present into an organism, say if we uh, spray on the plants along uh, when we are. Uh, uh, Watering the plant at that time, if this DDT flows along with the water and this water comes up to the lake, what happens? Here, if we see the concentration of the DDT when it has fallen onto the soil or along with the water, if it is moving up, say um, 0.2 ppm per millions, if this amount of the uh, DDT is mixed up with the water in the lake. Lake is consisting again of the zooplankton's or say small fishes. Then the small fishes will be taking the producers as their uh, nutrition. Say phytoplankton. Let us say if we talk about uh, the lake ecosystem, they are consisting of the phytoplankton. They will be taking up this uh, DDT content into them as water is uh, absorbed by the plant phytoplankton. For the process of the photosynthesis, and here the concentration is say 0.2 ppm. Next level is uh, is of the primary consumers here. If we say the zooplankton, if they consume this DDT content concentration increases into the zooplankton, and further zooplankton are eaten up by the small fishes. And from the small fishes, the concentration of DDT increases into the big fishes. And from the big fishes, if it is consumed by the humans, the concentration level increases into the humans. So here, the accumulation of the toxic substances at each trophic level increases. This we call it to be as the biological magnification. The concentration of DDT is increasing. DDT is nothing but the toxic substance. If it is increasing into the trophic level, as the trophic level goes on increasing, the concentration also goes on increasing and causes harm for the organism. And it harms to the topmost trophic level, and that may be the human beings or that may be the tertiary consumers. Okay. So what we have learned today in this class, today we have learned some of the terms. Like 
the food chain. What is food chain? Food chain, it is a series of organisms being eaten up by one another. That is called to be as the food chain. This food chain is linear. Okay, it is a straight line. It is uh, moving into a straight line. The next we have come across the food web. The next topic we have studied is the food web. The food web here, the web like pattern of the food chain is called to be as food web. It forms a network. Okay, it forms a network or web like pattern of the food chain. We are coming across uh, one of the questions like if what happens if one of the uh, organisms, say one of the trophic level is uh, removed from the food chain, what happens? We have taken the example of the grass, the leaves, and the lions. What happens? In the first case, if we see what happens if all the lions are removed. If all the lines are removed from this food chain, the leaves number will be increased. They will be overgrazing the grass, making that area to be as desert land. Okay, what happens if the number of leaves increases? If that number increases, the overgrazing of the grass takes place, which converts the area to be as desert. Second situation we have seen if the leaves are removed from the Food chain. What happens if these leaves are removed? The number of lions is increased. They start having the starvation for the food or their nutrition, for which they depend on to the other domestic animals or even attack onto the human beings for their nutrition. So this question is quite important. Sometimes you may ask, what happens if one of the trophic level is removed from the food chain? What happens? The same the answer depends. The next we have come across the ecosystem. Okay, the interaction between the five um, community we had seen into the first one, into the second interaction between the next one we had come across the interaction between the biology and biology components. What we had seen over here, we had come across that in a whole ecosystem, the presence of herbiotic components as well as that of biotic components is there, like uh, the soil, the water, the gases, the, uh, we had mentioned soil, even the temperature, the sunlight, water, the dissolved gases. Right, the dissolved gases, all these are the probiotic components present into the pond ecosystem. Along with that, the biotic components which are, uh, which are present in the pond ecosystem, those are the floating plants, those are the floating plants, the submerged plants. These submerged plants, they help to prevent the Soil erosion, okay, as they are at the depth of the water, they help the building of the soil, and these plants they prevent the soil erosion. Okay, then we have come across the phytoplankton, small fishes, the big fishes, and big fishes, and even the frogs. So, what are these? These are the biotic components which we have come across the interaction between a biotic and biotic components by taking up the example of the pond ecosystem. Further, we have come across the energy flow. We had seen 10% of energy, wherein only 10% of the energy is passed on to the next trophic levels. And here we had seen that the producers, they take up the solar energy, producers, the plants, they take up the solar energy from the sun. They um, convert the inorganic substances to be as organic forms. The, that is the, they are form, the formation of the starch, which is the food stored up into the leaves. This undergoes the process of oxidation by the process of uh, respiration. It is releasing energy 
and this energy is utilized by the plant for to carry out the cellular activities when the overall uh, cellular activities are carried out at that time most of the energy is lost in the form of heat whatever the amount of energy is present into the plant is around 10% further this 10% of the energy is consumed by the primary consumer say the herbivores all the cellular activities are carried out um, into the organism and here again most of the energy is lost in the form of heat and only 10% of the energy is present into the organism if this organism that is the herbivores are consumed by the secondary consumer say like the frog we had discussed the frog here and when this energy is entered into the frog most of the energy is lost in the form of heat because cellular activities are important for the sustenance of the organism so here most of the energy is again lost in the form of heat only 10% of the energy is present into the frog and this frog if it is eaten by the next consumer level uh, that is the snake again here the cellular activities are carried out most of the energy is lost in the form of heat and only 10% of the energy is present into the Uh, snake and this snake, if it is eaten up by the eagle, only ten percent of the energy is present due to the eagle. So as the trophic level is increasing, the energy into the organism is decreasing. We shall continue with the next topic into the next class. Mm -hmm.